Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And in this video, we want to take a look at some things I've got here, some pixel controllers. They might look like this. They might look like this. They might look like this. Who knows? They might look like something different in the future. We're going to talk about them today, how you choose the right one for your needs to get started with Christmas lighting. Let's dive in. So when it comes down to it, when we get down to brass tacks, a pixel controller does three things in a modern Christmas light display. Okay. Um, you know, back in the day we thought of a Chris pixel controller and we had something that kind of looked like this, probably didn't have a screen on it, had these green plugs for outputs in them. Okay. And we would take them, assemble them, uh, using, uh, these mounting boards, adding in a separate power supply, shoving it all in a waterproof box, which is out of reach. <laughs> and lo and behold, there we would have a fully assembled controller. Okay. That controller would then talk to our show player. It would be on a network together with our show player, often a Raspberry Pi microcomputer, or back in the day, uh, the program X scheduler or the Vixen scheduler, uh, depending on which software you were using on your computer. Okay. Fast forward to today, all of this has gotten a lot simpler and will continue to get simpler into the future. How's that? Well, it's pretty simple. So when it comes down to it, a controller, as I was mentioning, does three things. Okay, a modern Christmas light pixel controller. The first is it is a pixel controller. Duh, right? It translates the data coming from your show player, which is often built in, to that WS2811 type data, that pixel data. Sometimes you might hear it called SPI or SPI or something like that. And it translates that data uh, from your show player into that data that the pixels can understand. Okay, that's the first thing it does. And it, it outputs to those many strings of pixels. The second thing it does is it generally powers those pixels as well. So your controller is going to have typically a 5 volt or 12 volt power supply coming into it and it's going to supply that power through the output port that you're plugging the pixels into. Uh, so you know on this Matos Dragon right here we've got eight local ports and we've got some long range ports. We'll talk more about that in a minute. We plug our pixels in right here and voila they're now getting power from 12 volt power and they're getting the data they need in order to do stuff <laughs> put it simply okay what else does it do as i mentioned a modern pixel controller also has a show player built in now with this one right here the matos dragon d8 at the time of this recording it's new it hit the market late 22 uh physical models were late 2022 okay and at the time of this recording, it does not have a show player built in. However, that's been a promised feature and I do believe they're going to deliver on that. And when they do, this controller will be my pick for people beginning with Christmas lighting and even for myself and my show because it just simplifies things so much, is such a good design and doesn't cost that much more than building it all yourself if you consider any time of your time as any value. Because <laughs> it takes a while to build a controller. Okay, so these guys, they're awesome. So when it comes to deciding on controllers and picking controllers for your display, you're going to often have multiple controllers for any display, or you're going to have a single main controller like this guy or like a Falcon F48 is a really popular model, um, a main controller and long range receivers. This is just the board. It would live in a box. It would have the pigtails just like any other controller. Um, and, and this allows you to use the processing built in this main controller and send it over a network cable, not on a network, but just an ethernet cable to these long range receivers, which then we can chain multiple in a row out of one of the long range receiver ports on our controller. Okay. And so when it comes to choosing a controller, let's talk about brands for a minute. It's early 2023 when I'm recording this. 
At the time of this recording, uh, the most popular brands are Falcon, which is going to be a bare board based controller that you're going to buy. Some people offer ready to run versions. They'll sell those to you. Even pixelcontroller.com, the, the Falcon brand will sell that to you. Okay. Um, they're going to have a show player built in. I don't like it quite as much as the other show players like built into the Culp controllers. We'll get to those in a minute, but it does work. Um, and it is compatible with the show players in the Culp. And why you want a show player is it makes your show so much more reliable. It means you can run it wirelessly if you want. Um, there's just so many advantages to having a show player built in that I can't recommend controllers anymore that don't have it built in, okay? Because the Falcons have it. Next, we have the Culp controllers. Same kind of deal. It is a uh, controller that has uh, built-in local ports, maybe long-range ports. There's lots of different models, okay? The Culp controllers have the FPP software built in as the show player, okay? And they have on the back of them a microcomputer that's commercially available called a BeagleBone, okay? Or a pocket Beagle, depending on the model you've got. I recommend, recommend if you're going with Culp's, go with the BeagleBone version, not the pocket Beagle versions. Uh, there's some advantages to those, um, such as having the wired network port just makes setup so much easier, okay? Um, and they often have extra features in them like a clock to keep the time, um, which is great if you don't have it on the internet. A lot of them have some of the bigger ones like the K16, K32, have an audio output to go to an FM transmitter to play your music on the radio, okay? Really helpful stuff, okay? Uh, we also have, actually it's still out in my front yard, the Kurt brand of controllers, KurtController.com. We'll flash it up here. Kurt is a Canadian brand of controllers, newer to the scene last year. Similar to the Culp that they use FPP, uh, and there are others besides the Kurt, like Wally's Lights has a line of controllers now. Uh, there are others that are all FPP based, similar to the Culp in that they build that functionality in. It's just if you're not using a Culp controller, there's a small license that you do have to buy to use it with FPP version six or above. Okay, um, and hopefully I won't have to correct that. I think it's version six, or maybe it's five point something. I think it's version six. Anywho, um, that license fee is like, I mean, at max, the most ports is like 20 bucks, I think. So it's not gonna break the bank. Just something to be aware of as you're shopping. Okay, next is the new guy to the scene, the popular Experience Lights controllers. Now, Experience Lights is a controller brand made by two guys who've been in this industry a long time, David Peace and Lee Lindquist, okay? Very reputable people, good controllers. They also make the Dragon controller here that is for Matos Designs, okay? So the Experience Lights ones are, this is not one of theirs, but they're a bare board like this, okay? Whereas the Matos Dragon is a fully assembled controller, okay? Um, with all, all the stuff fully waterproof, it's awesome. Okay, um, they're doing so many cool things in their controllers that have made them really popular in this last year. Like automatic setup because it counts the pixels that are connected. It's gonna tell you if you have a pixel out. Um, I think it can even send you notifications. Um, and th there's a lot of cool stuff under the hood that they've got going on, okay? Uh, in terms of ingenuity, in terms of things that they've, they've built for the future, like using these long range receivers that we're gonna talk about in the next video more. Um, they can automatically assign them based on how they're plugged in, okay? Um, it automatically just sets it up for you. And it'll work with any of the brands of smart receiver, which is like, just so wonderful. Because smart receivers in the Falcons and Culps and other brands have gotten so confusing over the last few years. We'll talk about that later. At the time of this recording, as I mentioned in the last video, the thing that the Dragon controller doesn't do yet is it doesn't have a show player. So for that reason, I don't widely recommend it yet until they get that functionality built into the software. They have announced uh, that they've said that in 2023, we should see that, okay? Um, until we see that, you know, I'm not gonna recommend it blindly to everybody. I'm not gonna say, hey, that's my controller pick. Um, it's a great option though, if you don't mind running a network cable to it, using another controller as the show player, such as a Culp or just a BeagleBone or Raspberry Pi microcomputer on its own. Um, There's some advantages to that. Um, you would have to wire a network to it, but then once you do, it's a butt kicking controller. I mean, it is, it's got so much cool stuff going on. These things are awesome. 
They're just not quite there yet on the software. So I hope that helps you pick out a controller and begin uh, to go down looking at different brands and picking out the control. Did we cover everything in this video? No, we didn't have time for that. Um, but uh, in our courses in the academy, we talk more about how to lay out ports, how to figure all of this stuff out. And I also talk about it and cover some stuff in our emails that we send out. Um, and you can get those by signing up for our free guide, which you need if you're new to this hobby. It's called the four things I really wish I knew before, I think it's four things, before I began with Christmas lighting. We'll send it to your email inbox if you click over to learnchristmaslighting.com and sign right up. Until next time, we will see you guys. Thanks for watching.